Hey everybody and welcome to my channel. Today I'm taking a revisited look at one of my old tutorials. Hugely popular when this went out eight years ago and I'm hoping I can add a new commentary to help you all along your way with this particular look. So as you can see, this piece is definitely not without flaws. There's a huge section on the top which has actually had a chunk of veneer missing, um, which I've pre-filled and sanded down before I started this tutorial. The piece of furniture is a Victorian, I suppose you could call it antique. Um, it's something that I don't generally paint over, but there were some huge sections missing from this and I got it for an absolute steal. And I think the paintwork really deserves something that looks as if it's always been there. So first up, I'm taking a look at all of the natural patina and patina on this piece. And if you notice the panels in the insert, they're much darker, as is the top panel that runs along the top of the desk. And I always take these in things into note when coming to choosing a paint for the overall project. So I've decided that I will go in with a paint finish, slightly darker in areas and lighter in other areas, but I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna go for a lighter panel and a darker outside edge. But first up, we've got to work with a base coat. So the base coat I'm gonna use on this piece is Paris Gray. It could be old white. One of the light neutrals will always work really well on this faded grandeur look. So I'm using a medium Annie Sloan brush with an any which way directional paint method, which really helps build up layers and textures as we go through the process. The first coat is always your primer coat. You do not need to add any primer when using Annie Sloan chalk paint. And the second coat will give you a lot more coverage. Paris Grey is a really good colour for the base coat of any piece of furniture to get great coverage before adding those other layers of paint in your faded grandeur technique. Okay, for the purpose of this video, I've moved things on quite swiftly. The base coat went on, which I like to call the primer coat, pretty well, but I went in with another light coat more just to get a solid coverage to the overall piece. So now to choose some colours for those panels. So I've decided to go with colours that I think would have worked really well from the Victorian era and I've gone with Chateau Grey, and I'm also mixing in a touch of Paris Grey. I'm going to create slight different nuances within this panel. So a little bit like a soft blended feel, so a smoky blended feel. So I'll be using one colour and then switching to another colour. So as you can see, the outside edge of this panel I'm going in with the Chateau Grey. Again, any which way with the brush, I'm kind of doing rotary movements just to spread that paint around. And then I'll be going in with the Paris Grey to add that touch of a smoky blend, lots of nuances of different color into the center of each panel. I suppose this part of the process is really, really playful. As you can see, there is no rhyme or reason to this. I've just got my two colours, my Paris Grey, my Chateau Grey, on my mixing plate. And whilst they're still wet, I'm just blending the two together. I'm just creating different highlights and shades. Really, really playful. I've also decided that I'm going to take this overall smoky blend up to this top section and of course on the other panel on the other side of the project. So you really need to be thinking about which sections on your piece of furniture deserve the lighter treatment 
On this one, the two panels and that upper trim is going to be much lighter. I'm not worrying too much about my brush strokes going over those edges. We're gonna tidy all of that up a little later on in the project. So let's finish this off with marrying up the other side panel and the top trim ready for the next step in the process. So once you've completed all of your smoky blend in the panels, wherever you have chosen on your piece of furniture, it's now time to think about the other sections on this piece of furniture that exist with the Paris Grey. That is not the finished shade. I've decided to go in with Annie Sloan Olive, which is, to me, just a darker version of Chateau Grey. And I think it will really contrast really beautiful with the lighter panels in the piece of furniture. If you was using, let's say, Scandinavian pink for the internal parts of your panels, then maybe you could go in with Primer Red. Kind of the same colour family, but just a little darker. As you can see, I'm just taking it nice and steady around all of that trim, making for a very neat finish. This layer of paint is not going to have any nuances of colour. It's just a flat layer of paint over the Paris Grey. The Paris Grey is there for the distressing part of the process. A little later on, we will be distressing the whole piece of furniture, which should reveal some of those other tones of Paris Grey right down to the timber beneath. Once you've finished covering up your Paris Grey with your colour of choice, in this case it's the olive, it's now time to start thinking about the distressing technique that we will use over the piece. So first up, I'm not leaving this to completely dry out. There's a slight dampness to the painted surface before I move on to my distressing technique, which the method that I'm going to be using today is the wet distress technique, which I will be distressing all of the edges, the corbels, anywhere that you might find any natural wear and tear on the piece. With it being slightly damp, the layers of paint should kind of release in a very unique way, which will look totally authentic to an aged piece of furniture. So now let's get stuck into the actual wet distressing technique. You're gonna need a couple of cotton cloths 
and a bucket of water. The first cloth you're going to submerge into your bucket of water, wring your cloth out and we're going to get the whole piece nice and wet. So we're going to use this water to add lots of moisture to that paint and we're going to slowly release some of those layers. I always like to pick a place for wet distressing first and usually that comes in a place that I think gets the most wear and tear over the piece over years. So I'm starting with the handle and the edge of this door. I've got my cloth, it's quite moist and I'm slowly, slowly working that top layer of olive paint away just to reveal one or two areas of the Paris Grey. You can see just down here, there is one or two flecks on the edges of the cabinet where I'm pulling right down to that Paris Grey and even flecks of the wood coming through. So you can do this on all of the sharp edges around the piece. You will find that it is a very natural feel. The other thing to have on hand is a clean dry cloth. Now the dry cloth I like to use as a slight stronger abrasive to removing that top layer of chalk paint. So you would go in with your damp moist cloth, you could leave this to sit for a few moments allowing the water to penetrate that top layer of paint and then pick up your dry clean cloth and give it a little bit of a rub and you will find that it will pull a little more of that paint away. Truly authentic um, paintwork really chips away in layers and this really does help that overall look. You can see on the edge of this corbel little flecks of the Paris Grey coming through right down to that timber. As I proceed through my wet distressing, I'm always taking a moment just to step back, view the piece, look at the overall balance of where I'm applying the distressing techniques. And also I'm always thinking about where the natural wear and tear on the piece would be. So perhaps above this panel where there is a trim that goes round, I would always take a little off that trim because it slightly sticks out further than the overall panel. As I move on to the other side of this piece of furniture, I'm again thinking about balance, but I do not want a complete replica of the other side. So I'm gonna show you if you go too far with your distressing. So I'm gonna take too much paint off on the lower panel just down here. I'm rubbing really vigorously to reveal too much of the timber underneath. Now, if you go to that level and you're not sure don't panic, you can go back in with a touch of the top coat, in this case, the olive, and just soften it back in. Once that dries a little later, then you can just kind of push away a little bit more of the paint in the distressing technique. So nothing's lost. You can always go back and fill in areas when you're not too sure whether you've gone a little too far with that distressing technique. Now time for another layer of patina and I'm going to use a technique that I've used many times before on my faded grandeur projects and that is called fly spec or I like to know it as fly spec 
Many of you might know this as speckling. So we're going to add little nuances of speckles over the whole piece. The first thing I'm going to do is add a touch of olive and quite a bit of graphite to kind of make a muddy shade of colour. Sometimes I use Enfleur and graphite and that works really, really well. So let's talk about the brush that you might use for this project. Now I have got a large art brush with natural bristles in there and I've taken a quarter of the length out of the brush with a pair of scissors which helps for that extra twanginess to the brush. Also, what I would say is before you do any of this technique, grab a piece of cardboard and have a practice run on that surface away from your piece of furniture so you don't have any mishaps. Now, should you be a little bit nervous about this, you could give your whole piece a clear coat of wax, um, buff that in and then move on to the fly spec. Once that's dried, another layer of wax and it should seal it all in. So you might have just noticed I've used a, an atomizer just to loosen that paint. Your paint really wants to be of single cream consistency, just loose enough to kind of fall off your brush. I would always suggest a trial run of this technique onto your piece of card, just to really check the consistency of the paint how many speckles are firing off the end of the bristles. Also, I'm using my finger like a trigger just to flick back each of those speckles onto the surface. So let's give this a go. I'm pulling back, firing, and as you can see, it's leaving one or two little speckles there. I'm gonna keep on flicking just to get a good feel for this before I move on to the body of the main piece. Choosing the location of where you apply your fly spec, I think is kind of crucial to the overall look. So I like to tend to go for certain areas like corners. I like to leave a lot of vacant space with fly specking. And also, as you begin the project, I would say start on a side or somewhere quite near to the back where you cannot see it as much as the front surface. So another couple of tips is wherever you've distressed down to the wood, I would always say that's a great place to add your fly spec. So where I've gone down on the distressing marks on the corners, which you can see just beside, I would definitely add quite a lot of fly spec in that area and feather it away as it hits some of those pale tones in the panel. I am super happy with the outcome of all of the fly spec on the surface of this piece. So we're nearing the end of this project. So I'm going to go ahead with a clear coat of wax to protect the whole surface of this project. I will be adding a touch of dark wax into some of these details to add that little extra depth of patina so let's get stuck in with that first coat of clear wax and move forward to adding that final touch of dark wax to add that little bit more drama to this faded grandeur piece. Mm -hmm. 